Ah yes, I remember those days when WWE used to have the Universal Championship, which was such a curse, but ended up elevated to its prestigious level thanks to our tribal chief, Roman Reigns. I thought it would be great to talk about the full history of the Universal Championship. So a little history before the Universal Championship existed. From 2002 to 2013, WWE would have the two world championships with one world title from each brand. So you have the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship. On December 15, 2013, both titles would be unified as the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. The WWE Championship lineage would continue, whereas the World Heavyweight Championship would be retired. At that time of the moment till mid-2016, the WWE World Heavyweight title would be the only active primary championship. The WWE reintroduced the new brand split of Raw and SmackDown. The WWE Championship became exclusive to the SmackDown brand, whereas Raw would have its own newly established top championship where the title was named in honor of the WWE Universe, the name that WWE has always referred to their fan base itself. Enter the WWE Universal Championship. We all love Mick Foley, right? Everyone loves Mick Foley. I felt so bad. He's standing out there, he's a living legend. What the fuck was he holding? Like, what? No thought! As part of the big reveal, everyone was expecting to see a cool design of the championship. When I first saw this, my reaction was like, a red leather strap with the WWE championship design. Like, this is just lazy, boring, and stupid idea from bad creative that WWE had to ruin our excitement. Anyways, let's talk about every wrestler who has held the Universal title. Finn Balor was the first wrestler to ever win the Universal title, with all due respect. As cool as his victory was, I honestly feel like this was too early for him to win the world title which was a bad timing. But speaking of bad timing, on an episode of Raw after SummerSlam, Finn Balor was forced to vacate the title due to an injury that would put him out of action for several months, courtesy of his title match where Seth freaking powerbombed him on the barricade where Finn's right shoulder was landed. Sadly, as of this video up to date, this was one and only time Finn Balor would hold the world title on the main roster. I mean, let's face it. If Finn wasn't injured, could you imagine seeing him defending the title in an epic match during his title reign or a better rivalry? I mean, who am I kidding? I don't think he would able to carry that moment because at that time, Vince McMahon doesn't really see him as a potential main eventer. A week after the title was vacated on Raw, Kevin Owens won the Universal title in a fatal four-way elimination match involving Big Cass, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. This was a great move for Kevin Owens, who finally got the chance to win the world title in WWE, especially since he's one of Triple H's boys. His winning moment was such a huge shocker. As much as I wasn't a fan of the title design, I'm glad that Kevin Owens decided to make the championship look good on him. Throughout his entire run, he would have a decent rivalry with guys like Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns while he was tagging along with his then best friend Chris Jericho. Honestly, when I first watched this as a teenager, I always loved seeing the great chemistry between Chris and Kevin as they were the sole reasons why I decided to watch Raw every single week. As far as Kevin's title reign goes, I thought it was great, but it would have made him better fighting champion if he hadn't had any foul finishes or interference. Oh, and even better, Kevin would have fought against any different superstar that's not Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns. Just look at it. Kevin fought against Seth three times from Clash of Champions, Hell in a Cell, and that one random episode of Raw. Kevin also fought against Roman twice from Roadblock, End of the Line, and the Royal Rumble. And oh yeah, even he fought once against Braun Strowman in a 5 minute title match that ended by disqualification on Raw, in which was easily forgotten. I will say this, as much as I hate the way Kevin was booked as the Universal Champion, at least he's got some great moments during his title run. I mean, sadly, he would lose the title to Goldberg in a squash match at Fastlane thanks to the distraction from Chris Jericho. I mean, honestly. What the hell was that? 
Who thought this was a great idea to have Goldberg, who doesn't even deserve to earn this, beat Kevin Owens in a short main event squash fest? What a way to end Kevin Owens' title run, as Kevin held it for 188 days with 6 successful title defense. But this is a sad fact that as of right now, this was one and only world title run that Kevin Owens ever had in WWE. Goldberg would hold the title for 4 weeks as he turned his attention to Brock Lesnar, which led to their final encounter at WrestleMania 33. At WrestleMania, these two would have a better match than the first two matches they encountered. But this doesn't change the fact that it's still bad enough to have two part-timers contested for a major championship at the biggest show of the year. Brock Lesnar would win the Universal title as both him and Goldberg disappeared after WrestleMania, as well as the Universal Championship. Throughout Brock's title reign, he would be absent for 80% of his time as the Universal Champion as he would not be mentioned at all as WWE is acting like the Universal Championship doesn't exist. In addition, Brock Lesnar would not show up to non-major pay-per-view shows to either defend the title or have a match. You gotta understand that Brock's absence was not justified in the storyline. Brock Lesnar held the title for 503 days with 6 successful title defense. Brock went on to defeat multiple wrestlers who he had faced in single matches or multi-man matches. Names like Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, Kane, and even Roman Reigns. Not to mention, during his title reign, he would have the best non-title match against the phenomenal AJ Styles in a champion vs champion match at 2017 edition of Survivor Series. Hell, Brock and Roman would end up having three of the worst matches they encounter, one from the main event at WrestleMania 34, the other one from the Greatest Royal Rumble, and their final encounter where Roman Reigns finally beat him to win the Universal title in the main event at SummerSlam. Roman Reigns may have promised that he would become a fighting champion as he would defend the title against Finn Balor successfully on the following night after SummerSlam. He would then turn his attention to Braun Strowman who would cash in his Money in the Bank contract against him later on. And then this was a time when The Shield had their reunion once again. Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman faced off each other inside the cell on a pay per view where I forgot that Mick Foley was the special guest referee. Brock Lesnar would randomly show up and decide to ruin the main event as this match ended in a no contest. Oh boy, I can honestly tell you that this won't be the last time you'll ever see a horrible ending to a main event at Hell in a Cell, am I right? On a random episode of Raw, Roman managed to defend the Universal title successfully by defeating Baron Corbin as this was sadly the final title defense of his first title reign. Afterward, he and the Shield brothers would fight off against Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre in a countless of tag team matches, including that one match at Super Showdown. On October 22, 2018, Roman Reigns announced that he has been re-diagnosed with leukemia. Therefore, he would relinquish the title as Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar would face off for the vacant title at Crown Jewel. Sadly, Brock Lesnar would win the Universal title once again thanks to Baron Corbin using a cheap shot on Braun Strowman to give Brock a huge advantage to beat the monster at Crown Jewel. Then again, it's Vince McMahon's booking. What do you expect? Brock went on to hold the title for 156 days with only one successful title defense in which he fought against Finn Balor at the 2019 edition of Royal Rumble. Oh, and before that, Brock Lesnar would have the best champion versus champion match against Daniel Bryan at Survivor Series. Fast forward to WrestleMania 35. The 2019 Royal Rumble winner, Seth Rollins, managed to slay the beast when he defeated Brock Lesnar in the opening match of the show. Seth Rollins went on to hold the Universal title for an average run with four successful title defense. I won't be counting on the most random champion vs champion match with both world titles on the line that happened on Raw after WrestleMania. No need to explain why it happened because Vince McMahon says it's such good shit. Throughout Seth's Universal title reign, he would have a short feud with AJ Styles leading up to a good match at Money in the Bank. Afterwards, Seth Rollins would have the worst feud with Boring Foreskin, I mean Baron Corbin in three consecutive title matches. 
from super showdown to stomping grounds to extreme rules. Does anyone even find this rivalry very memorable? I really don't blame him because of how he was booked. The same goes for Baron Corbin and everyone else who was involved in this. Seth Rollins successfully defended the Universal title in a mixed Extreme Rules tag team match. Brock Lesnar came out and cashed in his Money in the Bank contract and won the Universal title for the third freaking time. There's not much else to say about Brock's third Universal title reign since this was probably one of the only forgettable title reigns that Brock has ever held in his career. Brock Lesnar would hold the Universal title for only four weeks until he lost the title back to Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. So as far as Seth Rollins' second title reign goes, if you compare to his first title reign, it's sad to believe that the second title reign was also a lackluster. Don't get me wrong, Seth Rollins is a great worker and a good wrestler, but the way he was booked as a Universal Champion overall, he was in the position of a horrible booking. But don't worry. I'm sure he'll find his new freaking vision of himself for the greater good. Wink. He once again became a double champ when he and Braun Strowman won the Raw Tag Team titles leading up to Clash of Champions where they both lost their tag team titles and then faced each other for the Universal title in the main event in which Seth Rollins successfully retained the title. Afterward, Seth Rollins would move on and enter a dark storyline program with The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Oh boy, if you really thought Seth Rollins vs Baron Corbin is the worst feud in 2019, well think again folks, cause things are about to get worse. Throughout this rivalry between The Architect and The Fiend, Seth Rollins slowly develops insanity as he goes through Bray Wyatt's mind games, leading up to the worst Hell in a Cell match that ever existed in WWE history. The match didn't end by disqualification, it ended with a referee stoppage for some odd reason. The referee was afraid that Seth went too far, destroying The Fiend. Too far my ass. There has been a countless of Hell in a Cell matches that were horrific to watch, and the match never stopped for any stupid reason. The entire existence of this match not only killed the gimmick concept of this match, but mainly the wrestlers' momentum. Remember this, around that time, the fans have already turned on Seth Rollins. Nonetheless, the rivalry continued until Crown Jewel where these two fall each other in a false count anywhere for the Universal title, in which WWE stated that the match cannot be stopped for any reason. It was just a reminder for anyone who remembers the worst Hell in a Cell ending ever. Thankfully, The Fiend Bray Wyatt finally won the Universal title to culminate this horrible rivalry. Bray Wyatt went on to hold the Universal title for a very decent amount of days, he would drastically change the Universal title color to blue as the championship would represent the SmackDown brand. The design was slightly better than the original one. He would go on to have a decent rivalry with Daniel Bryan leading up to a match at Survivor Series where The Fiend successfully retained the title. This was the time when Bray Wyatt made Daniel Bryan bring back the Yes Movement followed by The Fiend ripping out Daniel's dazzling hair. Afterward. Bray Wyatt would have a forgettable non-title match against The Miz at TLC. This would lead up to Daniel Bryan coming out with his old 2012 look. These two would have another month of rivalry until the Royal Rumble where Bray Wyatt successfully retained the title in a strap match. Shockingly, this was one of the very few great matches Bray Wyatt would ever have. As much as I was not a fan of the product at that time, I liked it how Bray Wyatt was booked as the Universal Champion. Hope it stays that way. Wait a minute. He can't. He can't. Oh, he will. Jack Hammer. Shoulders down. He did it. Goldberg's the Universal Champion. Oh shit. Here we go again. This is just as the same as the time where Kevin Owens lost the title to Goldberg. There's honestly no reason to have Goldberg, who has passed his prime, winning the Universal title for the second damn time. Then again. Vince McMahon had a wet dream to see some old guys chasing glories from the youngsters. Anyways, Goldberg would defeat The Fiend Bray Wyatt in a nonsensical 3 minute main event match to win the Universal title at Super Showdown. Goldberg would have an unworthy Universal title run as he was confronted by the big dog, 
Roman Reigns leading up to a supposed Universal title match at WrestleMania 36. Oh boy, I cannot imagine the fact that the audience were not very into this match. By the time the COVID pandemic hit, WWE moved on to having future shows at the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida with no live audience, as well as having two nights of WrestleMania. Roman Reigns would pull himself from the event and go on hiatus because he had to focus on his health and family. Roman would be replaced by Braun Strowman with no build up whatsoever. WWE couldn't even come up with a coherent reason why Braun Strowman is facing Goldberg for the Universal title. So hey, as much as I'm not a fan of this 2 minute match between Braun and Goldberg, I'm truly glad that Braun Strowman had his WrestleMania moment by winning the Universal title. Braun Strowman would hold the Universal title for the remainder of time when WWE broadcast their shows at the Performance Center. He would feud with Bray Wyatt leading up to their first encounter match for the Universal title at Money in the Bank, which Braun successfully retained. Braun would also successfully retain the title at Backlash where he fought against The Miz and John Morrison in a 2 on 1 handicap match. Afterward, Braun would resume his rivalry with the Eater of World Bray Wyatt leading up to a swamp fight where the horror show took place at Extreme Rules. The cinematic match itself just, just wasn't that good. Never as good as the Firefly Funhouse match. As I was watching this match, this felt more like a downgraded cinematic horror movie. What's only good about this is that the show ended with a cliffhanger where we would see the return of The Fiend. These two would fight each other once again in a false count anywhere to conclude their trilogy in the main event at SummerSlam which took place in the Thunderdome. Bray Wyatt would win the Universal title once again to culminate the trilogy. And out comes the moment when none of us saw this coming as Roman Reigns made his shocking return to WWE. He wrecked everyone and left as the show ended when Roman Reigns stood tall as he would later label himself as the Tribal Chief. On the following episode of SmackDown, Roman Reigns aligned himself with his special counsel, the wise man, Paul Heyman. Roman Reigns would become one of the best Paul Heyman guys next to CM Punk and Brock Lesnar. Bray Wyatt would hold the Universal title as he was heading into another pay-per-view show, Payback, which happened a week after SummerSlam. The Fiend and Braun Strowman fought each other for the very last time in a supposed triple threat match for the Universal title. Roman Reigns would not show up until later in the match where he signed a contract to compete, which is somehow legal and logically it makes no sense. He came in, wrecked everyone, and managed to pin Braun Strowman in the middle of a broken ring. Roman Reigns would win the Universal title for the second time, which marked the beginning of his historical title run. Just an FYI, I made a video about the full history of Roman Reigns' Universal title run. If you haven't watched it, click the video from the upper right above the icon to learn more about his historical title run. Roman Reigns would go on and have a historical title run for over three and a half years of his title run, including 31 successful title defense. Half of those times, there were a bunch of foul finishes and outside interference. 20 wrestlers have failed to dethrone the Tribal Chief, but technically, it would be 19 wrestlers who have lost to the Tribal Chief. Names like Jey Uso, Braun Strowman, Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan, Edge, Cesaro, Rey Mysterio, John Cena, Finn Balor, Brock Lesnar, Sami Zayn, Goldberg, Matt Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Logan Paul, Cody Rhodes, Ellie Knight, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles. Notice that Seth freaking Rollins wasn't even mentioned at all. He was the only wrestler that Roman Reigns failed to defeat since their match ended by disqualification. Let's not forget that Roman Reigns defeated Brock Lesnar in a winner take all match at WrestleMania 38 where he would become the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. The lineage of the Universal title would still continue as WWE wanted to acknowledge the number of days that Roman Reigns is holding the Universal title while holding the WWE title as well, even though WWE blatantly stated that the championship are unified. For the record, Roman Reigns was holding two active championships combined as the representation of the Undisputed Championship title. One of the reasons is that WWE doesn't plan on retiring the Universal Championship itself because WWE wanted to continue to state the record of his title reign. 
Roman went on to hold the Universal title for 1,316 days, thus making him the fourth longest reigning WWE World Champion in history, behind Hulk Hogan, Bob Backlund, and Bruno San Martino. There's no denying that Roman Reigns is arguably the greatest world champion in history, in which he has solidified his status from being the most hated hero to the most beloved villain. And I must say, the entire universe will forever acknowledge him. The Tribal Chief story concluded at WrestleMania 40, where Cody Rhodes finally managed to finish his story by defeating Roman Reigns and become the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. So far, he has successfully defended three times, beating AJ Styles in a five-star match at Backlash, Logan Paul at King and Queen of the Ring, and AJ Styles again at Clash at the Castle. So far, I can only say that his title reign is doing much fine process. I know there are a bunch of chapters for Cody since he has several potential rivalries he's gonna get through, so expect to see him holding the title for at least a year. But here's a bigger question that the fans are still asking to this day. Is the Universal Championship officially retired? As of this published video date, Cody Rose is currently labeled as the undisputed WWE Champion since WWE has quietly dropped the name Universal. For the record, WWE is still counting the lineage of both WWE title and Universal title. Just because Cody Rose is labeled as both WWE and Universal Champion doesn't mean he's a two-time WWE World Champion. But for some odd reason, the Universal title is still active according to the WWE official website. Unlike the World Title Unification from 2013, the WWE title lineage would still continue while the World Heavyweight title is retired. There's a bit of a confusion since WWE hasn't answered that. Hopefully sometime in the future, somebody like Cody Rhodes or anyone in WWE can finally answer the question so that everyone wants to know whether the Universal Championship is retired or not. But honestly, at the same time, WWE should drop the name Undisputed since WWE already has another world title, which is the World Heavyweight Championship. Understandably, you have the name Undisputed WWE Championship for some odd reason, mainly because the Universal title lineage is still active. Like I said, I hope someone from WWE can finally answer on whether the Universal Championship is officially retired or not. So nonetheless, here's what I think about the Universal Championship overall. This championship has some kind of a different meaning. This championship felt more like a curse, and it went in a different direction than where it's going. The championship was firstly introduced as the worst design in history. It was basically a WWE title design with red strap. I mean, if you look at every wrestler with it, there are some different point of view of how they held the title. But thankfully, at the end of the day, you have somebody like Roman Reigns who managed to save this curse and made this title very prestigious and very meaningful. On a positive note, as much as I'm not a fan of Roman Reigns of terror with his title reign, he managed to elevate this title to its new heights and credibility. I mean, he held the title for 1,316 days, and then he would lose it to Cody Rhodes, but hey, who knows if the title is retired, so. Nevertheless, let me know what you think of the Universal Championship by leaving your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the latest content on YouTube. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching this long video about the history of the Universal Championship, and I hope to see you again in the next one.